I think a lot of people have, it's the fear and it's always the fear of the unknown. But I'm like, either you think about what it can be or you just do it and find out because what's the worst that's going to happen. This episode is getting up close and personal. That's the title of this episode, up close and personal. We are recording. Welcome back to another episode of Hey Mark, the podcast where I, Mark, talk about different challenges, adversities, different struggles that we go through, whether that's in regards to your mental health, your physical health, your work life, your personal life, any entrepreneurial stuff that you're going through, or maybe some relationship stuff. At the end of the day, my goal, my plan is to just raise awareness that no matter what you are going through, you are not alone. We're all in this together. You're not alone. I'm not alone. And if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you're not alone either. <sighs> Let's go. Today I'm here. I'm joined with Myra Fuentes. And her and I met actually through Jay. So Jason Morales, Uplift Fitness, aka Pretty Boy Jay. Obviously, you saw the last episode where we all talked together, but Myra and I wanted to do a little one-on-one chat, get a little bit more in-depth and chat a little bit more. Maybe we'll talk about what we talked about last time. Maybe we'll talk about something new. I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't have a, a plan set in motion yet, but Myra, why don't you tell people like who you are, what you're all about, where they can find you, and uh, we'll get the ball rolling. Okay, thanks, Mark. So my name is Myra Fuentes. Um, I'm a hairstylist barber. I've been a hairstylist for uh, six years and a barber for four. Um, You can find me on my Instagram under Myra Favorite Barber. And um, and yeah, uh, right now I'm just temporarily at a uh, spot cutting hair uh, until I get my own business running. And so if you guys want to book, just book through the uh, Instagram because there's an option saying book now. So yeah, it's basically, but I'm a single mom also. Can't forget that. Uh, Full-time mom, um, full-time work and um, a lot of extra stuff on the side. (laughs) So when you say extra stuff, like you said, you you got that cooking page I saw. Yes. Are are you starting a business with that as well? Like you kind of do everything. (laughs) No, I don't do um, a cooking business. I actually thought about it, but I'm not going to commit to it because it's just a little more, um, it's, it's a lot of work if you're not in the industry due to like allergies and just certain things and cross-contamination. It's, it's just too much. I've thought about it, but I can't do it. Yeah. Do you have any allergies or anything like that? No. <laughs> I'm one of those annoying people that like I can't like go to restaurants well and nobody can make me food because I have like 90 (laughs) allergies shout out to all those people listening that have a hell of a lot of allergies it's brutal I'm so sorry that really sucks (laughs) I used to joke and be like yeah mother nature's just trying to slowly off me like Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't. Oh yeah. I don't envy people with allergies. Like I don't have any, I never had any. So for those that do, I, yeah, I praise you because that a shit ain't easy. <laughs> yeah. It makes you more lucrative. That's for sure. I don't, I don't get Definitely. to have like, don't get to have like milk or anything. The, the other thing is I'm allergic to milk. I'm allergic to a bunch of different things, right. but the best alternatives for milk are usually like Nut milk, uh, nut juice. What is that called? Like almond milk? Almond milk. Not, I drink yeah, that like, all the time. Yeah, like almond milk or cashew milk, but it's always like got nuts in it. So like I can't even have that. I, I do go. You I know can't have nuts? No, I'm allergic to nuts I, as well. But I feel like like oh everyone goodness. always hits me up in the DMs. I know like you can drink uh, oat milk, which is what I yeah. go with. Oat milk or rice milk, but oat milk tends to be the best one. And it's and, more expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is more expensive. This is a thing with allergies. You have to be uh, a little bit less frugal with your money. You have to buy, yeah. or, or you could just not have oat milk. You could just not have any of that. Milk at all, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's six. So we didn't actually get to talk about this last time, but I know that I've seen this on your like Instagram and we kind of covered it a little bit, but like you do right. bikini competitions as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I've been doing it. 
Uh, my first competition was in October of 2019. That was my first one. And I trained with one of the athletes that no longer works at uh, Uplift anymore. Um, and honestly, it wasn't a good experience um, because I found out that he's never trained someone before. He was just learning as he went. And it, I suffered for it a little bit because, I don't know, I was just dying. <laughs> <laughs> like it was at the end of it I think at the end of the competition I was eating I think 1100 calories a day on top of what I was doing like working full-time taking care of my daughter and then I think peak week which is the last week where you're just cutting all the water weight there's one time I did cardio for two hours only with a thousand calories a day I was I was dead I was just done <laughs> so uh... Yeah, that sounds a little bit rough, man. Yeah. Least. That's crazy. Yeah. Like at that point, like, you might as well just fast, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. So that was your first competition. And then, uh, obviously, 2020 was a little bit messed up. There wasn't any. Yes. I think, was there any shows? I don't think there was any shows in Vancouver here. No, the first show was supposed to be, I think, Lee Brandt Muscle Classic. And that's usually held in March. Um, and that was the show that I was going into in 2020 and it, it, yeah, it didn't happen at all. Dang. Not that you're going to represent the entire industry, but I'm just wondering, do you know if that show is going on this year? Is it scheduled? To um, it got postponed and, um, because of our mommy, Bonnie, she told us that we've prolonged the restrictions. So, um, yeah, it's, that's basically it. <laughs> it sucks, but. It, what can we do? Yeah, no kidding. And so how did restrictions impact you as a barber? Like, did you kind of feel the wrath of those restrictions as well as a business operator or, or as an employee? Um, I was lucky enough being in this industry, you kind of work on commission. So you kind of know how to budget everything out and kind of like know these things. And when it hit me, um, I still got CERB. And to all those people that had CERB, I hope you save some money from that CERB because you have to pay it back this year. So <laughs> most people do not know this, unfortunately. And um, so, yeah, I still got served, which was fine. I wasn't suffering that much. I was one of those underground barbers. And so I'm going to be blunt and whatever. Um, I had mouths to feed and I needed to do it. I don't care what anyone says. And I did not take any new clients. I just took my regulars um and we took the precautions like like literally they came to my house I didn't have my daughter there and when she because she was at her dad's during that time and um yeah I came in the house told them when I I told them when they arrived to message me I opened the door they had minimal contact whatsoever and they had the mask on so I'm like sit here like the chair was right by the door and I'm like just sit down and then let me know <laughs> what you want and then that's it but I was making money and if you heard Jay talk too you know that behind the scenes cutting at the shop. Yeah, you guys, that was me. That was 100% me. <laughs> I was making my money and I had to. And I know like the government, this is what I'm saying, the government's not gonna care for us. They don't care. So we gotta do it on our own, no matter what. And yeah, that's that's basically it. People don't understand that. Yeah, they just, they just don't care. They just don't care. Very David Goggins of you. I like that. You know, do you know? <laughs> I'm assuming you know who David Goggins is, or maybe you don't. No, I've never heard of him. He's uh, he's one of my my biggest idols. The guy's he's the man, but uh, he's got a book out. It's called "Can't Hurt Me." He's an ex Navy SEAL. He's uh, let me write this down. Can't yeah, okay, I well, I, I can just message it all to you after. <laughs> okay, you don't have to worry perfect. about it now. But David Goggins, yeah, he's super sick, and he uh, he had a really rough upbringing. But he talks about basically the concept of like, you got to be your own hero. There's nobody that's going to mm -hmm. come into your life and, and save your life. Yeah. It's not going to be a politician. It's not going to be mommy or daddy. It's not going to be, you know, anybody like that. You got to kind of analyze your situation, see what struggle you're in and become your own superhero, save your own life. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so how do you balance? Like, I, I'm sure I'm going to just go ahead and ask everybody's question that's right okay. now, because everyone's <laughs> probably at, wondering this right now. Like, how do you balance like we're looking at like single mom, uh, bikini competitor, business operator. And then you said you got a couple other things going on on the side. Like how, how does that, what's a day in the life look like? How do you balance that? Uh, pre, pre COVID times, the day looked very rough. <laughs> um, in the mornings, 
uh, it, it fluctuates. It depends what I could fit in and what day, of course. Um, Sunday, Mondays, I usually have my daughter. Um, every like this is a schedule. Every second Sunday, I don't have her. So that's so two times out of the month is when I have my my own time and I can do whatever I want to do, which is nice. Um, Tuesdays. And Wednesdays, um, it wasn't always like this, but pre-COVID Tuesdays, uh, her dad had her, but that's when I went to work. Um, so when I dropped her off Monday night, I could work out Tuesday morning. And then sometimes I tried to fit it Tuesday evening because sometimes I don't work out Wednesday because I have her. Uh, on Wednesdays, sometimes if I do work out, so I wake up, I get her ready, get myself ready, drop her off at my grandma's because my grandma takes care of her during the day. And then I work, she's there. I pick her up right after. And then I wait till she goes to bed. And luckily I had a lot of help around me and I could ask them if they can just watch her for an hour or two. And um, either, and it's great being in this industry because I can trade services. <laughs> so it's not great just sure. giving them, yeah, it's not just giving them cash. It's like, if you can do this for me, I'll give you this. And you guys, like, if people think I've been sleeping around, that's not the case. Like, I'm not that person. <laughs> Services as mean as cutting hair <laughs> or babysitting their kids. You know what I mean? Like other moms or, or other parents that don't have their kids. And I'm like, can you just watch her for an hour or two and this and that? Like, um, I have very reliable people. I tend to think about you are who you associate yourself with. So I want people around me to be just like me, like very giving, loving, um, very communicative and just very open, like blunt. Like that's why me and Jay get along because we're just very straight with one another. Um, and sometimes, yeah, some of that shit hurts. Don't get me wrong, but you just get over that hump and you're good. <laughs> But yeah, it's basically it. So my day consists of waking up, getting myself ready, going to work, and then either working out at night or, or in the morning. And let me tell you, in the mornings, I'm up by five, and then in the gym by five thirty, um, and then in the evenings, I'm in the gym nine thirty, ten o'clock, and I'm in bed by one, and then I have to get up at like I don't know seven. So, but you have to keep in mind those night times. Those pre that pre workout still running through my body, so sometimes it's hard to sleep. <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. Yeah, I do like no pre workout at all. Like I could just go into a gym just drinking water, no pre workout. Oh if I God. work out too close to my bedtime, I won't sleep. You yeah. Know? If I just work out, like I don't even have to take pre workout. Yeah. It just like just the actual the workout will keep me awake. Right? Yeah. yeah, the endorphins, the adrenaline. I don't know what it is, but once my heart gets pumping away, it's like, man, we're, uh, we're not going to stop moving for a few hours. That's pretty much it. You're like, I want to work out more. Yeah. Well, I, I actually like, so like I, I work out before work for that purpose, because then when I go right. to work, I feel more energized. I'm, oh, I'm ready to move. I'm ready to motor around. So like, it kind of makes me sharper. It keeps my energy more consistent. Yeah. Now is like the time. Like for those of you that are listening to this, so you don't know what time this is right now. It's 740 at night. And like, now is the time where you're like, you look exhausted. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm pretty <laughs> tired. Like, <laughs> right. Like I, I'm up in the, I'm a morning guy. So I'm up pretty early to work out. And then uh, by this time yeah. I'm like, I'm usually motor into bed. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So like what, because your first show was 2019 right? Yes. And you're already a mom at that point. You're already a barber at that point. You already got like a lot on your plate. Like what made you want to kind of pick up something new? You were like, oh, I'm going to take on this other hobby that actually <laughs> takes up like 40 hours a week as well. Like, how does that work? You mean the competing? Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah. 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 Like competing <laughs> itself is like a full-time <laughs> job, right? Like, like, yeah. so why, how does that it's work? Awesome. Like, how did that get into your lifestyle? How did um, it happen? Okay, so this might the water rocks might come in at this point because I am a very sensitive. I promise I won't I, cry that much. You, <laughs> my outer, my exterior Myra is very tough. Um, I've gone through a lot, so I come across as being a bitch and very aggressive. And it's okay, my attitude. I just accepted my attitude. People are like you have a lot of attitude. I'm like, okay, you can walk away. Like, don't talk to me, type of thing. I'm just like, whatever. But on the inside, I am very sensitive. I'm very caring. I'm very giving, and I'm very loving. Um, 
and people like when they jab at me with those things saying like I don't care this and that it really gets to me like I want to stab them in the face but I won't really stab them in the face <laughs> so yeah I'm very sensitive but as far as I get into the uh bikini world it actually started I, it's something I've always wanted to do even before I had my kid it's just I never found the time to do it um, I was the queen of excuses, like don't have time, don't have money, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure many of us can relate to that. Um, and then I had my kid and then I had to deal with her dad. And that is a whole different story. Like even right now, I'm still dealing with him or co-parenting you guys. It's not freaking ice cream and cookies. It's freaking like walking on nails barefoot. Like it's horrible. And I have an idea of what it was. I want us to get along. Don't get me wrong. I want to co-parent, okay? But man, the jabs that we give each other, I'm going to take fault in this too. Like, I don't think he's the brightest or the sharpest tool in the shed, and I still don't think he is. And I'm sure he thinks I'm a freaking dumbass as well, which is fine because he has his own issues. Um, but once I had her, once we separated um, we were never married. Once we broken up, there you go. That's a little bit better. Once we broke up, um, it was, it was weird. It was like, I was still in love with him, but he was giving me mixed messages. And then finally, when he started dating his girlfriend, I think about, he was hiding it, which was weird. Like about five months out of that relationship, um, it, it was a process for me to get over. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened with me, but I'm like, let's do this. I can't explain it, but I'm like, I don't want to make the excuses anymore. I don't want to do this. I, I have a kid I need to take care of. And I think it also stems from growing up with my mom, even though my, my mom wasn't faithful to my dad and my dad wasn't really there. Um, the relationship was very rocky and um, seeing her try to raise me and my brother I didn't feel like she was raising us or she just didn't know how I don't I don't know what her thought process was and I still don't know what it is I feel like I've concluded that she's just mentally a little bit mentally unstable and it's it's very interesting process and I've concluded that with her um and so seeing that, and then I have another family member that is the single mom as well. And you can tell she struggled as well. And I saw that and I see my cousin um, being the human being that he is. And um, I can just tell you that's something I didn't want. And I knew I had enough backbone to just be like, fuck this. Like, I'm going to break the cycle. I don't care what it is but I'm just going to start something new. And let me tell you, it was a fucking battle because I had uh, a family member tell me um, to suck up my relationship because my aunt went through it, which is his wife. And my grandma went through it as far as like a man will be a man and a woman will be a woman. And I'm like, no, <laughs> hell no. Like, and I told him and I came to the point where I'm just like, I'm like, you don't have any right talking to me that way. I make my own fucking decisions. I'm not going to suck up anything. So I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to fucking do this. I'm going to conquer this goal. This is something I always wanted to do. And there I am on fucking stage placing fifth in my first fucking competition. And I got this bronze medal. And I was like, yo, this is great. I was like crying. And I got to eat my donuts after and my pizza. It was like... It was like a bittersweet moment. And ever since then, I'm like, yeah, I can fucking do this. <laughs> yeah. But do you think like it was coming fifth in the show or do you think that it was just doing the show in general that made you feel like you achieved something so sick? Just doing the show. Just the fact that I just was able to find the finances to buy that bikini because it is not cheap. I don't know if you know how much they cost. But I know that bodybuilders make, have it a lot easier than bikini competitors I do in terms of uniforms. It. It's the, it is the dumbest marketing thing in the world. It ranges from 300 to thousands of dollars for that skimpy little freaking bikini that maybe covers a nipple. Like, 
Not for what me, it, that's for sure. I'm not spending that dough. <laughs> and so I had to get mine on sale. And even then it wasn't what I wanted, but I'm just like, you know what, fuck it, it's on sale. <laughs> yeah yeah and on sale it's like 300 and something dollars i'm like whatever i'm like let me figure this out that's crazy that's crazy and so like because you didn't even feel like you had the time before you had a kid to do this and then <sighs> after you have the kid you're like i guess i have the time now do you think that it was like kind of i didn't have like the time the, no <laughs> what's that yeah just, no that's I what i mean like do you think that it was just like not having the time or do you think that it was like not really having like a like a driving purpose behind it. You're like this time when you wanted to do it, you're like, I'm doing this because mm -hmm. you had like kind of like a why behind the what? I think it's just the lack of excuses. I just didn't have the excuses anymore. Like there's always time throughout the day to do something. Like um, I think you mentioned last time, like it doesn't matter these people making like, um, like these inventions, they have the same time throughout the day. So why can't I do the same thing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we're all human. We all have 24 yeah. hours in a day, but there's people that are achieving, like the, the, there's people that are making companies like Tesla. There's people that are making yeah. companies like Amazon. And it's like, it's not like they have a 30 hour day. Like we all have the same 24 hour day, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. And it's just like, it just doesn't make sense. Like why I can't do it. And yeah, like these people have more money. They have no more finances, more, more investors. Like I get it. Um, but what I've learned in that process too, is networking. Like it's very important. It doesn't matter what money you have. If you can just be a little more outgoing and open, you can actually go far because maybe you'll come up with an idea and someone hears it, an investor wants to invest in it. Like that's it. And then from there, it'll just be booming. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's like, it's like you're throwing spaghetti at a wall and then you're just going <laughs> to see what sticks and then you're going to go with that. Right. I love that. <laughs> Didn't coin that. Someone told me that at one time, but that, that's not like. But that's how I test my spaghetti. <laughs> Are you serious? Is that, you can test spaghetti like that? Yeah, that's how you know it's cooked because when it's raw, it bounces off. <laughs> and when it's cooked, it'll stick to the wall. Is that where that saying came from? Exactly. <laughs> You can tell I never cook spaghetti or throw spaghetti at the wall. Oh my God. It's such a weird thing, but I think it just, it's a cork in like making spaghetti. <laughs> just throw it at the wall. <laughs> I've never done that before. I guess I'll have to try that out. You should. But, um, because you were saying like, um, you were like on the outside, I'm this hard shell on the inside. I'm very sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm very like kind of a little bit softer. Yeah. Did you see a change in yourself like before and after you competed But in that? Like, like, are you more sensitive? Are you less sensitive? Do things impact you differently? Like, did you, did you get any, aside from the physical changes of like competing, did you get any like mental or anything like that? Any character development? Uh, I became mentally stronger for sure. Um, I was already known to be like within myself to be very disciplined. And I think before my brother said, yeah, I was a little more, I'm, I'm more active and outgoing than he is. Um, I'm not lazy at all. And I think also, um, yeah, like my main motivation was seeing the people growing up and making lots of excuses and not really, like I didn't really have someone to look up to. I just saw all the don'ts, like don't do this. So I guess in a sense, like everybody that I saw growing up, I'm like, I don't want to be like this at all. This is not what I want in life. Um, I think like one person that I really admire is probably my, my grandparents. My grandpa had his own bricklayering company. And I remember like when I was really small, um, my brother and I, because my dad used to work for him, my brother used to and I go, used to go help them out, but we weren't really helping the fucking kids. So what the hell do we know about bricklayer? <laughs> but seeing my grandpa hard work, like hardworking, like man up there doing his thing, his own company, like that's very admiring and very like, and he's um, like, my uncle has his own company too. He has his painting company. Um, but that like, I didn't really like, I didn't see that growing up. I just saw my grandpa cause I was around him a lot more. Um, but yeah, like just seeing him and then seeing him now, like they're just like, I, I just cherish it. I just want to hold them. They're so cute. <laughs> so having like family members, like being, I guess like entrepreneurs or business owners, it kind of gave you like a little bit more drive and then that kind of developed in you a little bit more, like when you were doing yeah. like the competition. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And 
it also my daughter like it's just I wanted to be that mom to show people that it doesn't matter where you are in life and like it's hard when you have a partner don't get me wrong because you're trying to balance out spending time with a partner as well like that's something different um but if you have a partner they would support your goals and dreams and they wouldn't push you down especially being a mom you're the one giving birth of the child your body is changing and it it's like yo it just feels weird I don't like it <laughs> like I I was like what is going on here there's so many things like because I'm very blunt and straightforward so I'm like I wish people were this forward with me at the time because I did not know I was going to experience this I don't like it let me tell you guys one thing, TMI, but I'm just spitting it out. When you're breastfeeding, your nipples should not go inside of your fucking body. That is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man, that is not the kind of changes I was thinking about, but that is funny. <laughs> I was ready to drink my water. And I'm like, better not at this point. I'm better not kidding. Not. No one ever said it was going to be as hard as it is. All they say is that you'll see, you'll see. And I'm like, no, tell me, just tell me more. <laughs> I don't want to see. I want to know. Just, yeah, I want to know these things because I will learn from mistakes. Like, it's okay. I don't need to experience all of them. But yeah, like my whole body changed and I didn't expect it to be like that. Like, like my mom was a little bit heavier growing up. So then when I gained the baby weight, and let me tell you, apparently my midwife, cause I got a midwife. Um, it was, uh, I was apparently textbook to what a pregnancy should be. And I'm like, what do you mean? And then she's like, literally when you read the pages, your pregnancy was literally what you read, how it should be. Um, I'm like, okay. I didn't even know. That's what a good you thing say though, that right? That's I a good just, thing. Apparently, I don't know. It was easy. Let me tell you, I, um, so yeah, when I was pregnant, I was super healthy. Oh my God. I'm going to get into this. It's the most ridiculous. Like thing the pregnancy ever. was easy or the birth was easy. All of it. <laughs> my moms are going to hate you. <laughs> I don't like, I don't talk about this with other moms because I just, mine was easy. So while they're complaining, I just let them have it. I'm just like, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. And I just go with it because I'm like, I know once I start talking about me, they're going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like the, the pregnancy was easy. I was still very athletic. Like, like, you know, when people crave like that pickles and ice cream, you know what I mean? Like that shit, like sure. apparently pregnant women crave like weird things. Do you know what mine was? You know what my baby wanted when she was in my belly? Fucking sh Shreddy's cereal. That's not bad. I was living off of that. That's that was bad. like my shredding. Did you see how many nutrients are in there? <laughs> no, I have. I've never, I don't really. Look it up after. Food. Cause that shit was like so nutritious for you. And I'm like, and I was like, yo, this tastes sweet. But then when I ate it after, literally right after I had the baby a day after, guess what happened? It tastes like cardboard. I don't want so, it anymore. Yeah. What's shreddies? Is that like, just like the shredded wheat, like the little square? Dude? Literally. It's okay. like wheat cereal, straight fiber. Oh, and then like my, my birth, my whole birth from start to finish was five hours. This was no day that shit. short? I don't know. I don't really know like anything about. Apparently the first pregnancy is always the worst and it lasts about a day. You get the contractions in the morning and then you birth the baby either at night or early in the morning. But I was like, no, the contractions happened. I didn't know I was having them. Shoved my face in the freezer because I was hot pooped a little you know didn't know what was happening <laughs> then I called my cousin and then she's like yo you need to call the pyramid I had to check if the baby was coming out and I shoved my finger up my hoo-ha and her head was right there and I'm like I need to go <laughs> oh man that just made me cringe I don't even have a hoo-ha I <laughs> This episode is getting up close and personal. That's the title of this episode, up close and personal. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was the most wildest thing I've ever experienced. I didn't know I have no time for epidural. That thing came out naturally. It was like, bah! 
I bet you my mom, if my mom ever listens to this, she's going to be so jealous. I think all of us had to be C-sections. We were stubborn little bastards. You're probably a big baby though, right? I don't know. Like I'm currently a big baby, but I don't know <laughs> if I was a big baby then. I think, I think I was just like an average baby. I think I was just your average baby. I right. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know you how much know? you weigh? Do you yeah, know how much I you was weigh? Like, I was like seven pounds. Is that a lie or no? That's average. Okay, I was probably seven then. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm pretty yeah, average. I feel like I'm an average guy, so probably an average baby. I don't even know how we got into this topic about who has it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's wild. <laughs> when, and the funny thing is, too, I was like, um, when you said that thing about shreddies, I was actually thinking about mini wheats, and I was like, those are really oh, good. Oh, that's kind of like it, yeah. But mini They're wheats with like that, that sugary like coating on the one side, yeah. so it's better. I feel like it's a bit sweeter. Yeah, the shreddies is like straight eating cardboard. Just, just, just grab a box and have some sugar in hand just in case, because that stuff is like straight cardboard. I looked for a cardboard box just now, was, and you're, <laughs> you're like, can I nothing. bite into this and see how it feels nothing. like? <laughs> That's crazy. So what, like, what between? Because you said you like through your competition, you developed a lot more discipline. You developed a little mm. bit more like kind of drive that way. Yeah. Like what part of it was like the most testing for you? Like what part of it was the most difficult? Was it like, kind of, I'm assuming it was the scheduling, but maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe it was like nutrition. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was, you know, X, Y, or Z. Did you have any injuries? Like what kind of was the biggest struggle? Like how did you develop that discipline? That's a great question. Um, Thanks. I thought of it on the spot. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that discipline was always there. And I think I think I on a topic like this with, with Jay, I think he posted something in a story and people to have that kind of discipline or that drive, you either have it or you don't. I feel like it's a personality trait. It's like working customer service. You have it or you don't. Um, and it's, it's hard to train if it's not within your personality. If you're not caring and nurturing about other people's feelings you're not going to have when someone comes back and says I don't want these pants because they're fucking too long for me and I don't want to waste money getting them hand just imagine if someone's like well fuck you too <laughs> compared to oh I'm so sorry for hearing that like you know it's just how they approach people so I feel like it's yeah. it's in you and it's engraved in you and it's a personality trait and for people that can actually when they say they can learn how to do it, they're actually just sparking what they already have. Okay, um, okay. I don't think you learned it from scratch, but I think you learn from what you already have, if that answers your question. Right, so like, but yeah, okay. So like, if I'm like a guy that seemingly has no discipline, right? Like I'm just like a, maybe okay. a super undisciplined guy, I can okay. somehow like spark that within me or like, could I develop that? Or no, I just don't have it. Is that? Yeah, I feel like if you if like if you push yourself to do it, you're gonna have to want it. And most people right. they they want it, but they don't want to put the work into it because they're so. I think like working into it is like not making the excuses, and just doing it like nose in. And that's something that I think a lot of people have. It's the fear, and it's always the fear of the unknown. But I'm like. Either you think about what it can be or you just do it and find out because what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, 100%. For like trying new things, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? like just start with small, like just start small, like with food. And then that's that, that's probably how I branched out too. I'm like, okay, let's go to different restaurants and try different foods. And then I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. Okay, let's, um, <laughs> one day I'm like, let's go skydiving. Okay. Yeah. Let's freaking do this and go out there. And that's what I did. And yeah, I think I talked about that. The one with Jay and I was just like, yo, you feel like you're a freaking bird in the air. And I'm like, you just, you see just straight mountains and blue skies. And you're like, yo, I don't feel like dying, but the, the, the earth is coming at you so fast. You just don't know what's going on or you just can't breathe either one. There's, there's so much going on. Do you think that like, like, cause you're talking about like maybe you, 
you were like a picky eater and you go and check out different restaurants or maybe you're just trying yeah. to like kind of try different foods out maybe you are afraid of heights and you go skydiving like do you think that like doing all of these things that kind of like maybe will initially suck for you or be uncomfortable do you think that those types of things when you force yourself to do them maybe like develop that discipline within you or maybe instill that discipline you already have yeah yeah i think you can develop it off of that you're conquering a fear and the fear is what holds you back Right. So if, if you just go for it, just go for it. If you don't like it, you don't like it, but you don't know until you do it. Right. Right. Is that kind of how you got into like barbering and being like in the, in the hair industry? Or is that, yeah, that's a different is story. That like trying something new. Okay. That's a whole different story. Are we cracking that story open today or is we, that like an we episode? Can, we can, thing? we can definitely. So I actually wanted to be a carpenter. <laughs> Hey, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. But of course, my dad being very old school, he's uh, from Central America. Very Don't Latin. say it. I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. We want to be raw. We want to be authentic. Say what he said to you. It's because I'm a woman. It's because I had such a pretty face and he thought I could do something more. It's not because you're tall? No. No, absolutely not. <laughs> It's because I was a woman and I loved building things. I loved working with my hands and I feel like I was good at it. I'm bad at math. I think that's something I needed to work on. Um, but I just love building things. And I'm like, I always, weird, but I always want to build a house. Is that weird? No, that's, <laughs> was, that's what carpenters do. That's what yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to build a house, but then like, yeah. And the next thing you know, my dad's like, why don't you do something different? And then he's like, why don't you do something like beauty? And that's how I got engraved in my head. Right, right. Because you're a woman, you had to do something in, re in regards to beauty. But joke's on him. I'm a barber and I deal with men every day. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I was like, <laughs> now you end up in a barber shop, which is like the most testosterone filled environment outside from a construction site. I still get harassed. <laughs> <laughs> well so that's what construction is even i get harassed all day in construction oh my god yeah i'm pretty savage though so i'm not <laughs> you just <laughs> i'm pretty savage i think everyone gets harassed regardless it doesn't matter where you are even if you have an office job you still get harassed it doesn't even matter yeah 100 percent. i feel yeah. like um i will say though i have had you know sales jobs i've worked in restaurants i've worked in retail I've worked in a lot of different industries and I will say that the culture of construction is uh, it can be pretty brutal sometimes in terms of like how people talk to each other. Definitely. It's uh, it's, it's one of those industries where you kind of got to develop a thick skin, but I feel like at the same time, by the same token, like, like pretty much every single barber I know is pretty quick witted. They're like pretty funny <laughs> people and they, they will not be afraid to hurt people's feelings. It's because we have to tell people that are bald that we can't put hair on their head. Like it's <laughs> no joke. Hey, has that happened? Have you ever had some guy that's like kind of like oh. bald and he's like, Hey, can I get a haircut? And you're I, like, I've which hair nothing. do you want me to cut dog? Like there's like, Oh, six. it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, they're so delusional about the situation and then there I am. I'm like, and you got to be real with them. No, or you, you have to No, you okay, you have to be real. So you do a consultation, of course, and you talk to them, but you like, you have to let them know they get offended. I don't know why they get offended. I'm like, you have no fucking hair. What mirror are you using in your house? This ain't no freaking clown house. Like, come on, get it together, bro. <laughs> And how does like, that now I'm just curious. How does that conversation go? Like, because I feel like if my, if, if I go, <laughs> to the barber and they're like, hey, we got to do a consultation first. I'd be like a little bit, I'd be like, oh, no, shit, the am I bald now? It happens when they're, they're in the chair already, when they book the appointment. It's usually very quick. Um, like, hey, buddy, I'm going to have to give you your money back because uh, there's no <laughs> hair to cut. I just, I just feel bad because I'm like, I'm trying to say it in the nicest way possible, but it's not nice. It's because they still get offended. I'm well, I like, come okay, in, I so... sit down. This is your chair right now, right? I come in, I'll sit down here. All right, I'd like to get a haircut, please. What do you say? Go. Just picture me being bald. Okay, so what, do you say? what kind of haircut did you want today? Uh, just take a little bit off the top. Is that it? Are we not cutting off the sides? I guess I would they say, I don't know. Yeah, trim the sides up for sure. Okay, well. and cut a little bit off the top. Yeah, that's right. 
I just say okay if they have a little bit off. The top. <laughs> okay. But like, what if I'm like, comp- like I'm like, there's nothing there. There's like, like how does that happen? Like, what is that? Because <laughs> I've actually never thought of that. Like, what if like a guy who's like balding comes in? That's pretty weird, eh? Some yeah, some guys actually know that they're balding and they're like, I don't have much off the top, so take very little. And I'm like, right. okay, like they get, they acknowledge it. But then yeah. I have people that are in denial. And unfortunately, um, it's younger men that are balding. They become very insecure about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel, I feel bad, but I also try to give them options. Um, I'm like, we can do this style if it works. We can do this style, it works. I'm like, but there's also, because I know a lot of people in the industry Um, so there's, um, Donna, a studio D that does SMP. So it's tattooing. Um, and then there's another microblading. Is that microblading? No, that's eyebrows. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Here I am. I thought I knew something, but it's okay. It's still tattooing. So you're still on the right track. Um, (laughs) and then the other guy that Jay goes to a different guy as well. Oh, I forgot his name. It's killing me. Um, yeah, I, I totally forgot his name. I just added him, but he does SMP as well. And it's just, it usually balls like in the the corner of the the front area, the widow's peak area. Right. Um, so you tattoo that part or I'm like, oh, you can go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. <laughs> Is that where they do them? Yeah, it's very common over there. And apparently they freak, you pay five, like I think five grand, six grand, way cheaper than here. That's cheap. And they treat, and they treat you like freaking kings over there. They drive you, That's they cater to you. That's yeah. Cheap. Five, six grand. Yeah, and I think that includes the flight and everything. Dude, you could buy a half for 20 bucks. <laughs> Just saying. Just they saying. can't buy half of the rest of their lives, though. They need to have the confidence. And I also want to broaden my horizons and get, I don't know if you've seen those, but those two pays for men, they glue it on their head. Right. Have you ever seen those? Well, like I feel like I've only seen like the old school ones from like the back in the day where you no, see them no. in movies. And they kind of <laughs> look like Donald Trump hair. Like, <laughs> I feel like. No, basically what it is. Like, you new would... ones? Yeah. So you basically okay. you cut around the crown area and then you put this glue and then you put on the hair and it stays on. I don't know what the longevity of it is, it, but you can go in the water you can do stuff with it, like, and then you come so back. It's kind of like them. those, like, glue in extensions, like chicks do. Kind of, yeah, exactly. But it just goes on your scalp. Yeah, and let me tell you, women, if you're hearing this, do not bash on men. They need confidence too. I am done hearing this nonsense. Yeah, women girls have- can get extensions. Guys can get toupees and 100%. wigs, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's yeah. more clients for you as well. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but men mean imagine if you went bald right now mark how would yeah. you feel um cold <laughs> and then i would just reach over here oh my god you're put, so ridiculous put this hat on would you wear that every day though um yeah even in the summer no i'd wear a, a blue jays hat in the summer you're go ridiculous. Blue jays. go blue okay. jays <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I've never thought of that. My, I'm, I'm like blessed that way. I'd yeah. say like, I feel like um, genetically, I think that the, all the, I feel like, I don't know how you get hair genetics. People always say it's like your mom's dad, but uh, both my grandfathers yeah, had hair into their like 80s, 90s. So I feel like okay. I'm good. If I can make it to 80, if I can make it, to, you know what? I feel like if I can make it to 35 with hair, I think that's where... I'll be okay if I go bald after that. I used to shave my head when I was a teenager, when I was like one of those like emo punk. I, I think would I like go kinda, bald that good. <laughs> yeah, I would buzz my hair. So like, I feel like I would be all right. Whatever, right? <laughs> and like, I don't even really have, like I have like a lot of hair, but like, it's not long. So like, it's not like it'd be that much different. Yeah, it looks fine. Looks healthy. Yeah, I haven't hit my barber since December. Shout out to my barber, but I haven't hit my barber in, since December. And- go see her. Go see her. <laughs> sorry <laughs> happened to like two minutes ago men need that confidence too 
<laughs> they do. Go get that confidence. <laughs> yeah, I should go get that confidence, eh? Dang, that's sick. So, man, I feel like your life is probably like so eventful between like having a kid, being a barber. Like what, like what do you think is like, Okay, obviously the obvious answer to like what's the most rewarding thing is being a mom, but I'm well, I'm yeah. assuming. But like, <laughs> like tell me about that because we were kind of talking like last time about you know the way that your daughter and you interact in, in regards to like apologizing yeah. to each yeah. other and the conversations that you have. Yeah. You speak to her like an adult. You don't speak to her like a little child. <sighs> no, she's three years old. So like, what kind of challenges like do, like obviously do you face with that? Do, do you guys like? Like, how does that work? How does that dynamic work? Because I feel like you're always on the go, no? Yeah, definitely. Even when I'm at home and I have her, she wants to play with me. She wants to play. Um, sometimes I like, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to put her in a Nintendo Switch. But even when she's on that, she wants me to play and she watches. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter what she does. Uh, conversating with her. Yeah, I talk to her. I try to talk to her as an adult. Um, and when I say words, I ask her if she knows what that means. And of course she's going to say no. And then I explain it to her. So just so she has that knowledge of what it means. And I think what's frustrating is that when she goes to her dad's house, again, it's very inconsistent. I don't know what they do over there, but what I do know is that the way her dad speaks to me, um, he makes it sound like that she can't talk. <laughs> And I'm going to say this in the sense of, uh, I'm just going to give a brief example here. One time um, I didn't brush her teeth in the morning and I was in a rush and um, it honestly it skipped my mind. And he messaged me, I guess, when he got home and he's like, he's like, hey, so Alina told me that you didn't brush your teeth. And I'm like, and she's not wrong. I did not brush your teeth. <laughs> she's right. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden he got mad at me. Like, why didn't you tell me you're the parent, this and that. And I'm like, or you can ask her like, what just happened? Like she obviously told you or you asked her, like, how did you get that information out of her? Yeah. So he like tells me like, you're the parent, you do this. Like you have to keep an eye on her. You have to tell me these things. And I'm like, you make it sound like she hasn't eaten in like three days and she's very malnourished, but I just didn't brush her teeth. So ask her, like in my head, I'm like, just ask her and then be like, okay, let's go brush them then. Right. Like maybe, yeah. maybe your mom was busy. Like it's okay, but we don't know what's going on in each other's lives. And that's where the lack of communication comes Whenever I ask him about things, he's like, this is my house. I live my own life. Don't worry about me. We have our own rules here. Like, it's always something. But when something comes along here, like, I actually had a situation two days ago where he called me an idiot and Alina is going to suffer my, from my stupidity, apparently, um, because she has like with a woman's body, it's very sensitive down there. And she had chafing. So it was red and he like lost it on me saying that like, she's dirty kind of like in that sense. And I'm like, well, I washed her in the morning. So she's obviously playing around and sweating, going to the washroom. I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll be there at night now and take care of it. But don't like bash me for it and call me an idiot and, say that she's suffering I'm like because I've never like recently like before right in the beginning when we broke up we were at it at each other but now I just try not to engage in it because it, I feel like he's gaslighting and I don't know if you read about gaslighting but it definitely it's something to get it worked like work you up to argue about something for whatever reason it may be but yeah. I, I'll never yeah so like, uh, yeah, I kind of had it explained to me once or twice. I don't really know 100%. I feel like especially as someone that speaks about mental health, I probably should know that. So that's probably a downfall <laughs> I could admit right now. But I have had it explained to me a couple of times yeah. to my understanding. Yeah, it's just like kind of making someone else feel dumb when they actually are right or making them feel like they yeah. created an issue when they didn't. Like kind of like one of those situations. But I guess that's something I could Google later and maybe I could bring up in a video one day. But, yeah. But I feel it's like, 
important. It happens a lot, unfortunately. It happens like a manipulation happens a lot too, and people don't realize what it causes. But it's it's uh, that's what it is now. Right. And so, like, what? So, like, say, like, uh, there's someone listening right now, and they're dealing with their partner, and their partner gaslights them, or kind of like does similar things to like what you're describing, right? They're kind of like bashing you. Maybe they're yeah. bashing you in front of their kid, like, or your kid, yeah. or like, say, say you're dealing with like kind of a partner that isn't the most supportive, like what kind of pieces of advice would you give to someone when you have to navigate that situation? Like how could you help someone that's listening in, in regards to that? You just don't engage in it. Right. So you kind you, of just like, is that like full on completely. ignoring yeah. them or no? you can say, okay, but you keep it dry. Like you don't like, if someone's like, like if, if my ex called me or my baby daddy called me, he's like, you're, you're an idiot. And I'm like, no, you're the fucking idiot. You're the one that did this and this and that. Like I just start going off then it gets them fuel to fire back. But I literally, when he said, you're an idiot and she's suffering from my stupidity, I literally put the phone down. I fucking had a moment for myself because that fucking hurts. And I'm like, don't say anything. I just left it. Because I know once I engage in it, he's just going to come at me with all these things. And it's happened before, unfortunately. Um, but I'm just learning just to be like, or I just say, okay, I'm like, okay, like you just stop. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Cause that's like, yeah. Dealing with, again, like that's something that we spoke about last time. I feel like dealing with people that when they come at me like super aggressively, or yeah. I, I tend to match their energy, which obviously is like kind of something that you explain you shouldn't do. I agree. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> it's just something that I just, yeah, naturally do It's something that I'm working on yeah, currently, yeah. but it, it, it doesn't fix the situation. It doesn't help. It just kind of makes everything worse. Like you said, like it kind of throws fuel on the fire. So does, I've always yeah. like, I've, I've been kind of look at trying to look at like maybe different ways to deal with that situation. How could I deal with somebody that's, you know, being aggressive towards me or insulting towards me because the, like the, the little like funny comedian Mark just is like, well, I'll just make a joke <laughs> that's funnier at, at your expense. Like I'll just, make myself laugh now at yeah. your expense but that's yeah. not the most constructive way to deal with it right <laughs> yeah. like um yeah that's annoying I can't I can't imagine that I gotta say like I gotta I gotta commend you for that because I feel like that job is probably your most difficult but also your most rewarding yeah, job for definitely. sure definitely like if I could have it any other way like I wouldn't want him in the picture but then that's not fair for my child so I'm like I'm or him even it. right like or him even because he still wants to be a part is i'm assuming he wants to be a part but i don't know like the whole situation but i know like if i had a kid like i'd be like yeah i want to be a part of their let's life. just say he wanted to take her more when he had the help from his girlfriend yeah or some people like also like fall in love with the idea of things but then they just don't like the responsibilities that come along with it yeah I don't know. Yeah. Again, it's kind of like my outside no, perspective. You're, you're but, right. You're absolutely right. But even I get that sometimes. Like, even I get that where I'm like, yeah, I, I want to like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe I want to be like a professional snowboarder. But then I go with snowboarding and I hurt myself a lot of times. So I'm like, maybe this isn't for right. me. You know, like some people just like the idea of things. But then when it comes time to doing them, they're like, yeah, I don't like yeah. this. No, it's, it's happened before. We've, we've been in many arguments, unfortunately, and they're going to continue and I don't think they're ever going to stop. And so I kind of have to teach myself and, and learn these things about these type of behaviors and personalities. And this is not what I wanted to do, but it's because I see it now. So when I see something happening in other relationships, I'm like, run, like run away from it, guys. Like, don't, don't engage in it. It's not going to get better. Like, and like the more I study about it, the more I read about it, I'm just like, this is, this is not good. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. No kidding. I know like for myself, like I've been in certain relationships and I'm not going to start bashing any of my exes right now, because to be fair, I was uh, probably not even the best partner to them. I was just going through a lot in terms of like my mental health, but I know like right. there's definitely uh, like, there's definitely times where there's behaviors that they have or there's reactions that they have to your behaviors that are just not good. So like, I know I could give my advice on this, but I feel like 
with the relationships I was in, there wasn't as much, I mean, there was definitely commitment to it. Like there was faithfulness, there was commitment to it, but we never had any right. kids together. So like, I feel like right. if someone's listening to this right now, say they're in a situation where they, they have a partner, maybe they're married, maybe they're just dating, right? But they have like a kid together or there's some feeling of commitment. Maybe they have a house together. Maybe they have some sort of a big emotional or financial investment. Like how do they, you know, if they get to the point where they're like, I don't think this is going to get better. Like, how do they kind of leave that situation? Like how, like, what would be like your kind of piece of advice for someone that's really struggling in a relationship, looking for a way out? Oh, Ooh, that one's hitting a, like a trigger. Um, so be like the last one. Cause I got to get ready for bed. <laughs> 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 but I won't I won't take up too much of your time but I, that, that that actually that's okay. is that's a question that just hit me to ask you and I feel yeah. like like you'd have more experience in that realm than I would because like I said like I haven't had you know like a, a baby in the picture or like a huge investment yeah. in the picture like that was never it's, a thing for me yeah it's it's a very scary thought if you're with someone that's toxic and you want to get out because you don't know what they're capable of or how they would lash out and I think the best thing I can tell everybody because I've been in a very abusive relationship way before I had my daughter where I, I was fearful for my life. Like he told me what to wear, to look down. Like it was bad. Like I was choked against the wall where I couldn't touch the floor. Like it was scary. And I think the best thing I can tell everybody is that there are lots of resources out there and you, you are scared for your life make sure you have a plan of moving somewhere that they won't know where you are. It doesn't, it, don't go to your mom's, don't go to that nonsense. Like you literally have to change your location. I think that's, that's how it is. And it's very scary thinking like that, but it happens. Um, you like, there's a way out. There's always a way out, whether and I would say if you're in a really bad relationship and it's you're scared for your life, you need to get out sooner than later. Don't waste your time. It's not going to get any better. Take the kids with you. If you have the kids, take whatever you need. Um, just take the essentials. Like, just, yeah, don't pack too heavy if you need to go, but you need to go. And don't stay. And the amount of times I tell people it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. And I've always told myself that I'm like, cause I'm very hopeful, very optimistic. And I think that got crushed with thinking this way. And then with people crushing it, um, yeah, it, it just doesn't. And if you talk to someone and they're willing to listen, then maybe you have a little bit faith in there. And if they show you with their actions, cause I believe in actions speak louder than words. It's really easy to say I have a million dollars, but to actually have a million dollars is something different. Um, so they have to show you and if they don't show you and if you continue talking to them, um, and they're not showing you just leave, it doesn't matter if you're in an abusive relationship or not, just leave because you are wasting your time. And as you said, Mark, like people like the thought of being with someone, they like the thought of investing all that time in someone. They don't want to waste their time, but you're actually wasting your time being in that relationship. Um, well, and you could even be causing yourself some more psychological 100%, damage. Right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. You think it's getting better and it's not. And then you think this is how the relationship is supposed to be. And that's how it was. My parents used to fight all the time and stuff like that. I went to, and I think that's how I got into very abusive relationships. And here I am now trying not to be that person and show my daughter that kind of person. And she won't know what I, I grew up with because I don't think she'll ever meet my mom, unfortunately. Um, and my dad is a whole 180. He's a different person since I was younger. So, and I think my dad needed my mom leaving for him to change as well. Okay. So, so he's made improvements. That's a good thing. 110%. He's a way better man than he was back in the day. Um, it probably helps not having me and my brother there too, the added stress. <laughs> We're adults now. <laughs> Now he's just chilling. He's like, no, no, doesn't have to worry about any of that. He's it's just him. <laughs> I got you. I got so you. yeah, but yeah, just just get out, you guys. Yeah, as yeah, this is said, Mark, it, it just causes more harm. And to to reverse all of that back when you try to find a healthy relationship is 
going to be nearly impossible because you've done it so much. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say as well is I feel like the longer you spend in a toxic relationship, I feel like maybe the harder it's going to be to get into a healthier one. Yeah, definitely. Cause you won't know what's healthy. And right. And you're kind of stuck in those patterns too, right? Yeah. It's the self sabotaging patterns because you, you feel like that you need an argument to be loved or whatever it may be. Um, it, it's just weird. Like I sometimes catch myself doing it still. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or even like, I feel like I'm trying to think of an example, but I feel like, mm, say, say like you're somebody who likes to have like, like your current relationship, maybe your partner's like super clingy. Right. right. And you appreciate like how much you feel wanted. But then a lot of the times when you're not with them, you're kind of like walking on eggshells because maybe they're getting a little bit jealous, right? right? Yeah. And like the more time you spend in that relationship, in that situation, like you start to resent the the jealousy and the yeah. neediness, but then you really appreciate kind of like the clinginess when you are there. And so right. then you look yeah. for that attribute in your next partner and then you keep wondering why you have all this jealousy and envy in your life and it kind of just perpetuates itself. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's spot on. So I feel like that's like for that pretty much, much, thank you, I nailed it. That's not like super <laughs> like, uh, yeah. But that, like, again, like that's not like super, I guess like, I guess it is psychologically damaging, but I feel like the examples you gave were a little bit more like dire situations. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I just, I couldn't think of anything well, it's else. True. Like, it's just like abusive relationships, whether, but like technically you're abusing yourself too. Like why are you doing that to yourself? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. It doesn't matter the severity of it. Just get out of it. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, like I heard this quote a long, long time ago, and it is kind of like one of those things where people are going to be like, Oh, you're saying like what you're saying right now is victim blaming. But I feel like what happens in your life, what you deal with is like what you tolerate like yeah. a lot of the time. Like if you allow people to walk all over you all the time, then you can't really ask like, Hey, why does everyone walk all over me yeah, all the time? That's why people think I'm a bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could just have like that like what do they call resting bitch face like i feel like i, I've got, don't, like, I don't feel like i do it's just once i start talking they're like whoa because i've had so many people when they first meet me i'm like super sweet and i'm like hey you know like hey how are you what's going on oh it's good to know and that's you're like bitch like are you fucking kidding me like why are you talking like <laughs> and then i just get so aggressive and they're like yo i didn't expect this from you <laughs> yeah and I feel like as well like sometimes it's also like whatever topics you're talking about because whenever like I have like I feel like I've been told I have like a couple different personalities I have a lot of different like tones of voice sometimes right. I can be very monotone but if you get me talking about the right thing then I'm gonna blow up I'm gonna have a lot more right. energy and I'm not gonna be as monotone but a lot of the time I'm pretty monotone so it's it's kind of funny that way I feel like it depends on it's very situational like that whole yeah. like resting bitch face resting I don't know like I feel like like you said earlier, like sometimes I can just look exhausted, just existing. But then other times I'm like, dude, how does this guy have so much energy at four o'clock in the morning? Well, like, cause you're a morning person. I'm a night person. So like that's everyone is different in that sense for sure. No kidding. But you were saying like you're a night person, but then you were working out at like four o'clock, five o'clock for your show. Those were hard. Those were hard mornings. That was fun, eh? <laughs> I hated those so much, but whatever. I got it done and I just did it for myself and, and that's it. And yeah, unfortunately that became another argument with baby daddy too. And I'm just like, this is whatever, bro. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, yeah, I'm not going to yeah. that. I was yeah. just going to make a couple of jokes, but I was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Go ahead. Knock those jokes. Go for it. No, 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 no. You <laughs> it's not even that funny it's just like yeah no i was i was like uh yeah the, the true reason i'm not saying the joke is because i'm not actually funny but um okay. that's, yeah all right well on that note i think out of respect for your time out of respect for my bedtime i i uh i will let you go i, I want to say thank you so much i will thank say you. It was really brave of you, honestly, to share a lot of the stuff that you shared today. I really appreciate that. I think that it shows a lot of strength and courage on your end. And I think that a lot of people that, you know, are 
either, you know, in toxic relationships. I feel like people that are wanting to do bikini competitions are going to benefit from this. I feel like people that are maybe first time mothers could even benefit from this. I feel like a lot of people are going to listen to this and hopefully get some value out of that. I, hope so. uh, I know like being a mom and being pregnant, that's not going to help me out too much, but maybe <laughs> that'll help me out with my future partner. But on your end, uh, I did the intro, so I'm going to get you to do the outro because uh, that's how I roll. It's too late for me to do any more work at this <laughs> point. So Mara, why don't you tell people, you know, where they could find you one more time, tell people what you're all about. Well, I guess we already know what you're all about, but tell people where we can find you. (laughs) And the only requirement for being on my show is you have to tell people something inspiring, something motivating, something positive, some bring some light to people's lives. But yeah, tell people where they can find you first and uh, give us our little send away message. Uh, okay, well, yeah, you can find me on Instagram under Myra Favorite Barber. I'm also uh, a part-time model under Modela Myra. So you can try there too. And my cooking page, which is Lettuce Turnip on Time. <laughs> so <laughs> I have those. Um, and yeah, and what I want to say is that people working out there with very time let's limited all I can say is work smarter not harder because that will get you far in life (laughs) I like it I like it I love it all right well thank you so much Myra thank you so much everybody that joined us tonight I hope you guys have a good day a good afternoon a good evening whatever time you're listening to this at go out and kill it have a good week have a good month have a good year for 2021 let's go this is it let's go baby thank you so much have a good night everybody no thank you everyone peace out